This video is a demo of EKG. Uh, it corresponds to section 41.1 of the Applied Analog Electronics textbook. The uh, demo that we're going to do uh, consists of a board very similar to the one that you'll be doing for the EKG lab. There are some differences here in that this board uh, uses the old prototyping board and things are in different places. Uh, you have got more room on the new boards for resistors. Uh, there isn't room, on, however, on the board for an instrumentation amplifier chip the way there was on the old boards. So this one doesn't use the instrumentation amplifier chip. There's a spot here for it that's not populated. Uh, and it is doing just a, just using the quad op amp chip, the same as you'll be doing for the lab. Um, the screw terminals are in slightly different places. There's one screw terminal down here, which I'm, I've got double-headed pins in for connecting to the breadboard. Um, and that gives power, ground, and the output. I've actually got two outputs coming from this one, V out, and I also put out the reference voltage so that that can be monitored. Um, the inputs are coming in on the other screw terminal, and I've got three wires for the inputs. Now, the three wires for the input makes this a one-lead EKG. When we're talking about EKGs, um, the term lead really means channel. Um, and so it doesn't refer to the number of wires. It refers to the number of distinct differential channels that are being uh, recorded. So a 12-lead EKG, which is the standard one used for um, new, used by cardiologists for diagnosis, doesn't have 12 wires. It's got 12 channels. In fact, it's got 10 wires. There are four wires used for what are called the limb leads because they're connected to the arms and the legs. And then there's six more chest leads uh, because they're connected to the chest. Um, so that makes a total of 10 wires. Um, but those 10 wires are... Uh, interpreted in 12 different differential channels. There are six channels that are associated with the vertical plane, and those are just derived from the four limb wires. And there are six horizontal plane that are derived from the six uh, chest electrodes. Okay, so um, I've got three wires here. I've color-coded them so that uh, I can keep track of which one's which. And I recommend that you do that too, is that you use a different color for each of your three uh, wires that you need to connect. Two of the wires are the differential channel. That's going to be the yellow and the green here. And one of them is used to bias the body because our differential amplifiers, our, our instrumentation amplifier, that's the first stage of our, um, of our EKG, has to have the signals coming into it. The common mode has got to be uh, uh, small. It's got to stay within the voltage range of the power supply, and we're using a 3.3 volt power supply here, so we don't have a very large voltage range. Um, and in order to keep the body electrodes within that voltage range, what we do is we connect the VREF signal from the board to an electrode on the body. Now I'm going to use lead one, which is left arm minus right arm, and I'm going to be using the um, sort of the emergency version of uh, an EKG where uh, you don't have a person lying still and relaxed on a bed um, the way you do for the diagnostic uh, EKGs. When one's doing it for emergency medicine or for uh, exercise monitoring, uh, stress EKGs, any of a number of different uh, applications, you don't want the uh, signals you would get from these large muscles in the arms or legs. And so the electrodes, instead of being put on the wrists or ankles, are put um, just under the collarbone. Um, and if you take a look, collarbone here, and there's a spot under the collarbone where there isn't really any muscle. There's muscle further down. You don't want to really run into that. So you just put it under the collarbone where there isn't much muscle. And so I am now going to try to hook these things up. And if I can remember my color code here, oh, I better check. I had the yellow was the right one and the Green was the left one. And so there's my differential channel hooked up uh, across the two shoulders here. And uh, now what I have to do, everything's pulling here because my leads here are very short. 
I'm also going to ho hook it up down to um, just above my left hip for the bias lead. All right, let's take a look at what this looks like with Teradac. Okay, so I've got the, the two leads hooked up here, or the three leads, including the, the bias lead. I've got the Teradac set up for uh, 180 hertz, and that's because I, I want to see the 60 hertz noise that I'm, I'm definitely going to be picking up with this thing. Um, and I'll filter that out with a digital filter afterwards. I'm recording two channels here. One of them is the V-out, and the other one is V-ref. And so let's just see if I can get this to work. All right, that is looking like a very nice EKG. You notice there's a big drift there on the baseline occasionally. Um, and I'm not sure of the exact cause of that. It may be synchronized with my breathing, I'm not sure. But it's very common to get DC drift like that in uh, these sorts of recordings. And that's why uh, we want to do some bandpass filtering once we finish with this signal to get rid of that drift. Okay, so I am going to disconnect these leads now so that I don't pull everything onto the floor here. All right. Um, so let's save this. Um, and you can't see where I'm saving it to because that comes up as a different window. Um, all right, so I have saved that. Now let's take a look at it with GNU plot and take a look at what we can do to filter it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's old data there. All right, so I'm going to run GNU plot, and I'm going to plot the data, and that should give me, you can see these this big movement in the baseline there. It doesn't look very clean. But I can clean this up with the same uh, bandpass uh, filter program, the Python program that we used for uh, the pressure sensor, except for that I want a different frequency range. Because for the pressure sensor, we had only very low frequencies. So we did, did stuff that was you know, only went up to like 6 hertz. But the sharp spikes here are much higher frequency uh, and if we filtered it like that, we wouldn't really see something that looked like the sort of EKG symbol, signal we expect. So I changed the, the cutoffs to be between 0.3 hertz and 50 hertz. I still wanted to get rid of the 60 hertz noise that's kind of messing up the baseline there. So um, I could do this with this uh, as we did before by running it through the program and then plotting the data that comes out of that program. Um, but I, I'll show you another trick that we can use here. And... Let's uh, hide the GNU plot there. Um, and here, if you take a look, what I've done is I've done a plot, and then instead of giving a file name, I've given a, a less than sign. And that says, run a program. And then I say, well, the program I want to run is Python 3 with the bandpass filter.py, and then taking its input from the same data file that I had before. And, because, and what that'll do is it'll do the bandpass filtering uh, column 1 will be time again, column 2 will be echoing the input data that was in column 2 before, and column 3 will be the bandpass filtered one, and then I'll plot that with lines. Um, so let's do that, and pop up the window. Um, now, you don't really want to move around much on this window because every time you, you move around on this window, it'll go through and redo that bandpass filtering. Um, so this sort of quick kludge of running it through, a, uh, running it through the filter in the com command line for GNU plot is um, only useful if you only want to do something as a quick demo. If you're going to be moving around, scrolling, things like that, then it may be better... Um, to well, let's see if I can if I can get this thing to work. 
zooming into a particular region here. And you can see there's quite a pause where it does nothing and then it, it suddenly displays it. That's because it was going through and re refiltering that entire program, rerunning the entire filter program, filtering all the data, and then displaying just this part of the result. Um, running it through a f into a separate file, the way we did for the pressure sensor lab, is probably a better approach. But I just wanted to show you this trick as sort of when you're trying to do a quick demo. Um, and maybe it would help if I moved it. I moved this one out of the way so you could see the command for doing that. Now, when you're looking at the EKG, what you're normally going to see if you've done lead one or lead two, uh, lead one is left arm minus right arm, uh, lead two is left leg minus left arm. Um, if you do one of those two leads, you'll usually get a big skinny spike with a couple of bumps on either side of it. And these, all these different features have names. Uh, the little bump that comes sort of first before the, the tall spike, that's P. The dip here is Q. The big spike is R. Then the uh, little dip after that is S. The, the bump that comes after the big spike is T. Um, these are traditional names, uh, but the, the R spike is, is the one that really stands out. And in lead, leads one and two, this usually comes out as a large vertical spike. And you can see that I have done amplification here so that I've got about what looks like 1.4 volts of signal here. Now, that's not really what you want to see in an EKG. What you really want to see is how many millivolts were there at the electrodes because what amplification you've got in your um, amplifier is not really of interest to somebody interpreting a heart signal. So what they want is for you to correct for any offsets. You know, they don't want stuff centered at 1.65 volts or something. Um, they want, to, want it centered at zero and they want it uh, to be in units of how many millivolts was it out here. And to do that, you just have to take this signal that you've got out of the filter and divide by the gain of your amplifier. So you have to know pretty precisely what the gain of your amplifier is. Now, this same technique for doing EKGs is used for lots of other sorts of electrical signals from the body. Um, one of the common ones is EMG, electromyograph. And the EMG um, is used for skeletal muscles basically any muscles other than the heart is an EMG. Um, you also can get signals from the which direction your eye is pointing. That's an electrooculogram. Those are somewhat uh, harder to gather good data for. And then if you want to gather very small data, you can get uh, electrodes on the skull to measure um, neural behavior inside the skull. And those are electroencephalograms. Those are much more difficult because the signals are very, very small. And so you have to be much more careful about uh, avoiding noise. Here, the um, signal that we've got from, from the heart is, is a millivolt or two. Um, the ones from the brain are a few microvolts. So you need much higher gain and much better noise control if you're going to deal with those. Um, the no low noise uh, signal processing is a little bit beyond the scope of this course. Um, but you should be able to get a fairly clean AKG. It won't necessarily look like this one that you that I've got here. Um, different people's uh, hearts have different patterns. Sometimes if you get something that looks funny on lead one, it might look perfectly normal on lead two. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about, uh, in a different video, about where the EKG signal comes from and why you get some, some of the different patterns you get. Um, Right now, though, what I think I would like to do is to show you a sort of demo of EMG, uh, not done by me, but done uh, as an advertisement, actually. Keyboard solo!
keyboard device. Do it! Okay, uh, that was just a little bit of fun. Uh, you may have noticed that they only had one electrode for each of the muscles. And I think there they were not using the same sort of differential channels that we use for the heart because the signals you can get from a skeletal muscle, particularly large skeletal muscles, um, can be quite strong and you can use a, a simpler um, single-ended uh, amplification where you just need one wire per muscle and there's somewhere a um, biasing electrode for the entire body. Uh, you can try playing with that. You can certainly do um, one channel of EMG uh, with the EKG uh, system you're doing. It's more sensitive than you need, but uh, you should be able to see the signals fairly clearly. So you might want to play with that also.